What would it take for you to betray your family's trust and become an informer? That was a choice faced by Mossab Hassan Youssef, the son of a high-ranking Hamas leader who grew disillusioned with the group's brutality. Youssef's decision to spy for Israel and his relationship with his Israeli handler is the subject of the new critically acclaimed documentary, the Green Prince. That's one of the latest arts offerings that WGBH News arts editor Jared Bone says are must sees. I know they were in here the other day and you were talking, you're going to have a piece later in the week, but you were quite taken by this. This documentary is fascinating and interestingly, we all know about Hamas and its rise to power uh, within the Palestinian organization, especially after Arafat's death. And one of the most uh, visible Hamas leaders, uh, the story about him, we don't really know. I've been talking to so many friends who don't realize this either, but here he has his son who he brings into the fold, is, is essentially his lieutenant, privy to a lot of meetings and, and machinations, although he will tell me in this interview not everything, uh, becomes so disillusioned by the violence he saw perpetrated by Hamas leaders, especially with prisoners that they'd taken in, that when he was arrested by Israeli agents, he allowed himself to become an informant, and he had this handler that he began working with. And it's told in this very riveting documentary, documentary a very different style. Uh, it's not very staid. It's by the same documentary documentarian who made uh, Man on a Wire. Mm. Uh, and here's a clip about when he's arrested by the Israeli authorities. After I left the house, I see special forces coming out of the bushes, pointing the guns right to my face. They pulled me out, and when I resisted, I start to receive hits from everybody. So essentially, this becomes a two-hander. You have his point of view and you have the point of view of his Israeli handler and both of them you, you, you're so riveted throughout this film because you're wondering where the conviction came from for him to risk his life to leave his family to spend so much time with his Israeli handler and you're wondering from the point of view of the Israeli handler how did he have conviction mm. that he wasn't you know, yeah you're a, turn on him yeah that he wasn't that he was really feeding mm. legitimate information um, but through this the course of this film you come to understand why both men had the conviction they had and, and mainly what drove him to become this informant and as you mentioned we'll have an interview with both men who, the uh, Yusuf and his handler, handler later in the week yeah, great all right and so you have a couple other movies you've got one the drop well somewhat lighter but not really lighter <laughs> uh, everybody here of course knows Dennis Lehane our great Boston writer well the drop is a short is a film based on one of his short stories and it's set in Brooklyn and the drop refers to uh, the uh, gang members dropping all their collectings for mm -hmm. the collections for the night at various bars and there's a robbery that goes awry uh, but the, the main reason to see this film is you have sort of this underbelly society of New York and the one of the robberies takes place at a bar owned by James Gandolfini. His bartender is an actor named Tom Hardy uh, in real life. And the, the, to watch these two men really at the top of their game, and it's significant with James Gandolfini because mm -hmm. it is his last film, uh, it's fantastic to watch the both of them. And here we have a scene where they confront each other. That bar stool that you put that old bitty at and bought her free drinks and don't think I don't know that you did it on purpose. That was my stool and nobody sat on that stool because it was Cousin Marv's stool. And that meant something. That meant something. But it didn't ever. It was just a stool. Wow, eerie to see him. Tom Hardy, yeah, and he's yeah. great as always. But really, the focus here should be Tom Hardy, who, who, you you have this throughout this film. You have this sense of you, whether he is somebody who's slightly dim and not quite processing what's going on in the world, or if he's somebody who's in complete control and it's a breakout mm -hmm. performance. Right. Yeah. One other thing, that's the Lion King. You and I saw this together. What, 15, 16 years ago? Ten years. Ten. Right. It's actually the anniversary of the of <laughs> when Lion King opened the Opera House in Boston. It just came back and opened on Friday night, and it's here for about a month. Emily, I have to tell you it's as good as the oh, first time that it. we saw it you I think I remember this is way back when I was producing I got to put for all you. the outfits on you did and you interviewed Julie Taymor who really changed the scope of mainstream theater with this that. show uh, and yeah it's a fantastic piece that yeah. you did and because she had a, such a hand in, yeah. in all and of the, the aesthetics value the costumes one Tony's for everything right. it's as good as, as it's right. always it's a been. lot of fun thank you Jared as always <laughs>